So, in part two of this tutorial, we'll be looking at deep foundations, specifically piles in clay soils. And also, we'll be introducing two layers into this example so we can see the effect um, on the problem when we have more than one layer of soil that our pile is in. So, the example we're going to be looking at here then. We have a 10 meter deep pile, 1 meter in diameter. Again, we're looking at a circular pile. The unit weight of this pile is 22 kilonewtons per meter cubed. And we have two layers that the, piles, uh, the, sorry, the pile is in. The first layer, 6 meters from the top, 6 meters deep, is soft clay. And the cohesion of this soft clay is 25 kilopascals. The second layer, 4 meters from the bottom of the first layer, is a stiff clay. Cohesion of 125 kilopascals. Both unit weights of the soft and stiff clay has a gamma sat or a saturated unit weight of 18 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Now, an important note for clay soils, the limiting capacity is often controlled by the short term, i.e., the undrained conditions. Now, we're going to be st working through this example as we did last time, looking at the base resistance, the shaft resistance, um, the weight of the pile, and then ultimately uh, calculating the ultimate actual load that the pile can take. Starting with the base resistance, as before, PBU equals AB bracket FB plus P0, FB being the net ultimate resistance, but for clay, FB is equal to NC times CU. So, um, if we just substitute that into the equation above, we have PBU equaling AB bracket NC times CU plus P0. Now, it is conventional to take CU as CUB, where CUB is the undrained shear strength of the soil at the pile base, and to assume the undrained internal friction angle is zero. The value of NC can then be obtained from Skempton's chart and uh, the Skempton's chart is for when the internal friction angle or the undrained internal friction angle is equal to zero. So let's start calculating the base resistance. AB is the area of the base and so pi r squared pi times 0 0.5 squared equals 0 0.785 meters squared. P0 equals the overburden pressure at the base of the pile, so it's gamma times the length of the pile, so that's 18 times 10, equaling 180 kilopascals. Our NC value um, can be read off this chart here, and we can obtain a value for of 9. So our NC times CUB equals 9 times 125. Now, CUB, as I said, is equal to the uh, undrained shear strength um, in the soil at the base of the pile. And you can see here in this scenario that the soil at the base has a CU value of 125. We're not using the properties of the soft clay because the soft clay is not at the base of the pile, the stiff clay is. So uh, 9 times 125 equals 1125 kilopascals. So we can put that all in now into our PBU. So PBU equals 0 0.785 brackets 1125 plus 180 close brackets equals 1024 
kilonewtons for the ultimate base resistance of this part. So moving on to shaft resistance, PSU equals FS bar AS as before FS bar being the average ultimate side resistance per unit area, AS equaling the surface area of the pile shaft in contact with the soil, but as I said it works slightly different for clay soils. Now you may have seen the equation before FS bar equaling this equation here and obviously it is um, to do with integration because we have this symbol here that we should all be familiar with. Personally I don't like to look at that kind of equation. Um, integration isn't my kind of thing so I steer clear from it. So I'm just going to go through it how I approach the question. I know that Fs is equal to alpha times Cu times Z. Now alpha is a reduction factor and is specific to or dependent on the value of Cu, the undrained shear strength for the clay in question. But we need to remember we have two layers that the shaft surface uh, area of the pile is in contact with in this problem. So we need to consider both. And that's just simply a case of Fs equaling alpha 1, Cu1 times Z1 plus alpha 2, Cu2 times Z2. And this, this could go on for as long as we like, but um, we only have two layers that we need to think about in this question, so it will stop here. Um, now we want fs bar, we've only got fs, so we want the average, so we need to times this all by L over, uh, 1 over L sorry, to give us the average, um, and then we can substitute this back into our PSU equation, so we can have PSU equals 1 over L brackets alpha 1 Cu1 Z1 plus alpha 2 Cu2 Z2 close brackets times AS. Now our A our AS in this scenario, um, due to it being circular, is calculated by pi dl. And it, now it's just simply a case of putting numbers into the equation. So 1 over 10, close bracket, alpha 1. Now, our alpha 1 refers to the top layer of uh, soil in this problem. So if we look at this chart here, um, we know that our Cu is 25 kilopascals for the first first layer. So read up, read off this chart as a value of one. It doesn't intersect with the curve, so it defaults as a value of one for the reduction factor. Um, so it's one times 25 times six plus alpha two. Now alpha two. We're using 125 kilopascals off this chart, and we should get a value of around 0.43 for the reduction factor. Hopefully, you get something similar. So, 0.43 times 125 times 4, close brackets, AS. So you should attain a PSU value of 1147 kilonewtons. Moving on to calculating the weight of the pile, we know W equals the volume of the pile times the unit weight of concrete. So again, because the pile is circular, W equals pi times R squared times L times gamma C gamma C being the unit weight of concrete so we have um, when we put the values in a weight of the pile of 173 kilonewtons and then last step we know that ultimate bearing capacity PU is equal to PSU plus PBU minus W so it's just a case of substituting in the numbers now 1147 plus 1024 minus the weight of the pile, 173, equaling 1,998 kilonewtons as the ultimate bearing capacity of this pile. 
So in part one and part two, we have looked at piles in clay and sand separately. In the next video, we will look at an example where the pile is situated in sand and clay layers, and we'll see what effect this has on the design of our pile. Something to ponder though for part four of this tutorial. Let's just give ourselves a scenario. We have an oil rig out at sea. The path foundations are partly above the seabed and partly penetrating the seabed. What effect do you propose buoyancy will have on PU, the ultimate bearing capacity of the pile? This is something we'll be answering in part four, but something for you to think about for now.